Hello, this is my mind map on a few aspects of cyberbullying. I want to look at two things here. <clears throat> Basically, the, I think one of the main uh, issues is recognizing cyberbullying. In order to do that, you need to know what the signs of cyberbullying is and also the various types, what constitutes cyberbullying. Um, this may not be a complete list, but it'll definitely give one a pretty good idea of things that they can look for to see whether a student might be a victim of cyberbullying. So this is a mind map here, and I kind of want to give you the overall picture. Then I'm going to zoom in here, starting with signs of cyberbullying here. Let's get a little larger here. Um, so you have various signs that someone might be cyberbullying. For example, avoiding technology, lots of anxiety. Um, actually, I'm going to backtrack a little bit here. Next to the signs of cyberbullying, there is actually on this mind map a link to the Common Sense Media site, which I'll bring up here real quick. Um, and that is actually a very good resource for learning about what is cyberbullying. So I definitely recommend this to you. And this one thing nice about the mind map is you can actually embed links into this. Another one would be avoiding technology anxiety, kind of avoiding how to use technology, all these different <clears throat> anxieties about using it, not wanting to do projects there. Um, and the site here actually is going to take us to a video here all about a student talking about different technologies and anxieties related to it. So one, that'd be one sign, avoiding technology anxiety. Uh, students becoming socially withdrawn would be another sign that maybe there's some cyberbullying going on. Depression, low self-esteem, okay. Yes, uh, declining grades, L less interest in actually doing the work there. Um, it definitely is going to affect your students' poor sleep and eating habits as well. Uh, so these are all various signs that one of your students might be uh, experiencing uh, or be a victim of cyberbullying. So something to be, to keep aware of. Now what is cyberbullying? What constitutes cyberbullying? So look at that here. <clears throat> we can kind of go in a little deeper here. Here's cyberbullying. <clears throat> it definitely affects real lives. A um, couple ways that it can uh, ways that people can use cyberbullying. I guess would be flaming and trolling. <clears throat> this would be uh, writing nasty comments online. You know, we're you know putting stuff on Facebook that's you know har almost harassment. Um, it's making fun of what people say online. Um, you know, it's just basically rude behavior that's being done online, where multiple people, lots of people, can uh, can all see. It's generally a public way of making fun of someone. Another one that's coming more common is this happy slappy, which is actually a new term for me. Apparently it's when someone harasses some another person, maybe physically abuses them, and it's being captured by a cell phone and posted online. So one partner capture, has a cell phone capturing the video of another person being insulted, um, and that would be called happy slappy. So that's another example of use, you know, the, obviously the bullying part being the physical assault, but then the cyber part is the post capturing it with a cell phone camera and posting it online. Um, we've probably all heard about identity theft impersonation. Um, yeah, there's lots of examples where students have, for example, impersonated their principal or assistant principal or teacher um, and made very derogatory comments, posted. Um, of racially insensitive photos, things like that, pretending to be that person. Um, so that might be an example of identity theft and impersonation. Obviously, photoshopping, taking a photo and making it look like something that's that's very cruel or rude about a student. You know how much students are, um, how much we all are actually care about our appearance, what people think about us. Um, but particularly students who have less um, experience and abilities to deal with that, photoshopping is a very real issue. Um, last is also physical threats. You can use cyber media, digital media, to make physical threats. Um, it's in a way sometimes almost easier for bullies to make a threat online, to send up emails, multiple emails harassing people, posting stuff on Facebook pages. 
um, threatening to do you know some physical harm to another student. Um, and the last is going to be the rumor spreading. You know, this is also a lot can be done a lot faster, a lot more easily online. Rather than passing notes and having to physically tell someone, you can post something, you can text people. Um, there's a variety of ways now you can spread a rumor, and you know, amazingly quickly it could spread through the entire school. So it's definitely something with cyber bullying that we're seeing a lot more of. So let me back out of here just a little bit. Those are a couple of things there. Now, so how do we deal with this? What are some resources we can use? Um, they're handouts. Let me come in here a little bit. Excuse me. There we go. There's uh, some handouts here. This is, again, uh, another website called netsmarts.org. And they have lots of good materials, tip sheets, and things like that that you can use as a teacher and also for parents to use to help their students deal with cyberbullying. Um, other resources would be also from Common Sense Media. Here's lots of lesson plans that go along with every different grade level. Um, here is cyberbullying, um, and you can choose the grade levels, everything from K kindergarten through 12th grade. They have a, lots of good materials that I think you'll find very useful. Um, and lastly, here are some videos as well. These are from NetSmarts. They've done some really good videos that, that I think students can relate to, and you might wish to show either in class or kind of post them online. Um, so those are a bunch of resources to help you deal with that. Um, and as requested, the citations for the resources here, whoops, there we go, are Common Sense Media and NetSmarts. Um, those are the two main resources I use to gather information for this presentation. So I hope this was useful. Um, I'll make the link available in our Google group. If you have any questions, please let me know. I hope you enjoyed. Have a great day.